The hypothesis test for association in a contingency table calculates the probabilities that the distribution of values will be significantly different for different columns and significantly different for different rows. We will take the observed data that we have in this simple 2x2 two two table and we will start off by calculating the row and column totals. And this just uses the simple sum function, which we can then copy to different rows and columns. So we can see that our 2x2 two two contingency table consists of 66 observations, 43 in the first row, 23 in the second, 31 in the first column, 35 in the second. The null hypothesis is that the observed values occur randomly, but with the probabilities defined by the observed row and column totals. In particular, the Fisher's exact test then calculates the probability that the given distribution, or one more extreme, may occur simply by random chance. Just for reference in this discussion, we will identify the different cells in our 2x2 two two table by the letters A, B, C and D, together with their obvious observed totals, for example A plus B. We start the analysis by calculating the number of ways it is possible to select 31 items for the first column out of a total of 66. So that means we wish to use the combination function to work out the number of ways of selecting A plus C items out of the total number of N. So we use N, C, A plus C, which in Excel is the combin function. And we'll start with the total number, which is 66, which is in D4. And we will select 31, which is in B4. And this will give a total number of ways of 6.4 times 10 to the 18. We now look in each separate row for the number of ways of selecting items for the first column out of the total. So for the first row, again, we use the combin function. But then this will be a selection out of 43 in D2 to select 24 to go in the first column. And that will be 8.0 times 10 to the 11 ways. Similarly, we can copy the formula down to calculate the number of ways of selecting 7 out of 23. We can then calculate the probability of getting this particular selection of values as being equal to the number of ways of getting the two specific rows of data, which will then be the product of the number of ways of getting the first row, multiplied by the number of ways of getting the second row, but then divided by the number of ways of getting this particular distribution of rows and columns in the first place, which is the overall number of ways. This gives a probability for getting this particular selection of 0 0.0306. We will record this result just by copying this particular table to here and then copying the value for this table, control C and paste special with just the value relating to this table because we also need to calculate the probabilities of more extreme distributions. And we will identify a set of extreme distributions in one direction just by reducing the value of 7 by 1, but we must maintain the column total, so we must increase this one to 25. 
this means we must reduce b to 18 and increase 16 to 17. This has returned to the same row and column totals as before but with a more extreme difference in the distribution between the different rows. And we see we have now got a probability value, but this probability for the more extreme distribution has become less. So we will copy this particular data set. And again, we will copy the result and paste the value. And we can go one step further. We can reduce the six to a five. We must make this a 26. We must make this a 17 to maintain row and column totals. And we must make this one an 18. And again, the probability has decreased. So we take this particular possible distribution. And again, we will copy the probability and paste it as a value, going to even more extreme values, 24, 27, 16, and 19 now. The probability gets even less. So we take, copy this data again, and it's associated probability going even further. We now see that the probability of this particular distribution is less than 0 0.00005. So within the uncertainty of our measurements, we only need to take into account these four distributions representing our experimentally observed distribution, the first one, and three possible more extreme values. So if we calculate the total probability of any one of these occurring, this will be a simple sum. And so that we can say this then is our one-tailed p-value for an association between the rows and columns for this two by two table using Fisher's exact test. Note that this is the one tailed p value. To get the two tailed p value, you would also have to include the probabilities of more extreme distributions by adding values along the bottom left to top right diagonal. But this video is sufficient to demonstrate the principle involved.